Um, <clears throat> first of all, I have an image for you. And um, what I saw was, first of all, there's this uh, person underwater. And I don't know if it's a mermaid or somebody just underwater, but she looks like she has scales on her. And uh, I see her breaking through to the surface of the water. And as she emerges from the surface, she was gasping for air. Gasping for air. So what I got from this was that I feel like some of you were living in a situation where you felt a little bit outside of your element. The water deals with emotions. It deals with deep-rooted security-oriented issues. And I feel for many of you, there might have been a situation you were in where it felt a little bit restrictive. It felt confining and it just felt like you didn't really belong. And I feel like for some of you, this might be a work situation where um, you feel like a sense of disconnect when it comes to the people around you. It's almost like they didn't really understand that you're just there to go through the motions. And I also feel like there is a sense of disconnectedness when it comes to being able to uh, feel at ease or feel that sense of camaraderie with the people around you. Um, I also feel as if many of you, you go through a lot of things. You, you have a lot of things on your plate, a lot of things that you're taking care of. And so you have a lot of responsibilities and you guys are definitely not whiners. You, you guys don't complain. You guys don't sit there and sulk about your predicament. You put on a happy face and you know, you, you move forward, you keep moving. And in a way, everything that you see yourself having to deal with, having to take care of, having to, it's like situations you find yourself in. Um, I almost feel like the universe gives you a lot of responsibilities because you're able to handle it. But from your perspective, it's almost like, why are all these things kind of, you know, dropped on me? And then when you go out and with your friends or with colleagues or with coworkers or even your significant other, you put on a brave, happy face, but you also feel as if the conversations, you know, if you're, if the other person is like talking about, you know, their daily events, what they're doing, what they're buying, where, what they're getting at the grocery store, what they're doing on the weekends, you hear what they're saying, but you almost feel like you can't really relate to their mundane uh, life, mainly because of everything else that you're dealing with. So yes, you can sit there and have these superficial conversations, but then at the end of the day, it's kind of like, you know, rolls off the, the, the duck's back, like water off the duck's back. It doesn't penetrate. And I also feel like it doesn't really have any bearing on you. And you feel this sense of emotional disconnectedness from the people around you. Um, so this element about gasping for air, I almost feel like Many of you are feeling emotions very, very, very deeply for somebody. It might be in a way where it's new, you know, like the, uh, the situation is new. And I, I almost feel like there's third parties involved here. So you could be the one in a relationship and there's somebody else in your life that you're, you, you are really, really falling for. And then I feel like for others of you, you might be the single person and you're falling from stuff for somebody who has recently gotten out of a really bad relationship or they're still heavily involved with another person. And I see you going out on a limb to make an offer to this person, you know, in, in a way where you, you, you care about them, you want them to be okay and you feel like if they're in a bad relationship, they should be with me. I can take care of them. I can make the situation better. But the swirl of emotions, its um, it feels almost overwhelming to me. It's almost like your heart. Um, it's hard to breathe. It's hard to, to express it. And you feel it so deeply. But there are some barriers between you and the, that other person that's preventing you from expressing how you feel. Um, for some of you, they have reached out to you. And for whatever reason... 
um, I just feel like you're not really responding because of the weight of your emotions. And so they're already thinking, you know, worst case scenarios. They're already thinking, oh, the Capricorn person is avoiding me. But I also feel like you have a lot of things on your plate. And so you're trying to do things when you're ready. You're trying to, you know, find that that time when you're ready to reach out. You're trying to find that inner balance in yourself. I will do it when the time is right, or I will do it when I feel a little bit more settled. So there's a lot of things I feel like you're putting on the back burner because you're not prepared to deal with them just yet. And I also feel um, you will be going on a limb, going out on a limb to express how you feel to another person because once again, you don't want to be, you know, um, you, you don't want the weight of the emotions to kind of crush on you, crush down on you. You want to break free to the surface of the water where you can breathe, where you can see the light, where you can express how you feel. Um, for some of you, I also feel like there is some disappointment in love relationships. It's almost like finding out somebody's in a relationship. Somebody that you care for, somebody that you really like, they're in a relationship. And although the feelings are reciprocated, you know, although they, they, they like you too, I feel like they're choosing the other person or they're going forward with the other person. And so there's a sense here about somebody going out on a limb, um, expressing themselves to somebody that actually has reciprocal feelings, but the relationship is not getting off the ground because they might be with somebody else. Um, I'm also feeling as well, um, there's a space here. There's a space here where it seems like somebody's underwater, uh, dealing with a lot of emotions, um, putting on a brave face, trying to kind of like forge ahead on their own. You know, um, you guys are really strong and I feel like stoic and self-sufficient. Uh, and so you don't like to bear your soul and have somebody see you in a state of vulnerability or what you perceive to be weakness. You want to, you know, do it on your own. You want to test your capabilities. And so while you're simmering with all of these emotions, um, on the surface, everything looks very calm, very tranquil. And so... My advice for you is um, honestly release this emotion, find an outlet for it. You don't have to tell everybody your business, but you should have, you know, a few confidence that you can, um, confidants that you can um, relay this information to, that you can, can kind of unburden yourself, I'm feeling, mainly because it feels to me like it's hard to breathe and it feels to me like there needs to be a, uh, an outlet for it. Uh, there's a lot of preparation here to, to be done. And I'm almost feeling like many of you are embarking on something brand new. Um, you're scoping out opportunities, okay? So we have here the Ace of Swords. This is like looking at an opportunity, feeling like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for me. I should go for it. And it's still in the implementation stages. It's still like the emergence of a new idea. So nothing is being laid out. The foundation is not laid out just yet. I see for many of you, you're trying to take a course. So for example, if you are thinking about nursing, you're doing research and you're just like, this is something I really, really want to do. And not only, you know, because there is material gains to be had, but also because you enjoy it. So you're contemplating and you're also doing the research. How much is, you know, the entire course going to take or going to cost? And so you're trying to save up and you're trying to pay something, I feel like, in, in uh, quarterly or monthly installments so that you can make this dream a reality. And there's a lot of trepidation from your end about the initial investment, about the sunk cost. So I feel like you're heavily thinking about it. You've already done your research and you're just like, I'm going to start, you know, taking this course. And I know it's really, really expensive. And so I just need to make sure I'm doing the right choice. I'm making the right choice. So there's that element coming in about um, 
needing to pay for something very, very expensive, but it's also skills building. So I see people doing a lot of research and I know you guys are very, very methodical in everything that you do. And especially if there are finances involved, you're going to do your research to make sure you're getting the best deal. You're going to do your research to make sure that you are, um, that you know the ins and out before you sign a contract, which is great. Um, the only thing that I want you to be careful about is if space is limited, if there's a deadline, if there is, um, if there are like, um, uh, quotas or limitations on, you know, the, the, the maximum capacity, you want to make sure you don't wait too long before you execute. Does that make sense? So it's like, if they're only accepting 30 students, you need to make sure you get your name in there first. Okay. Uh, look more into refund policies. So then sign up first and then maybe back out later because I feel like there's a, a space limitation and then you might miss your boat. So I, that's something you want to be careful about. Um, so I'm seeing people signing up for courses, real estate too, for some of you, loans, mortgage, real estate. And then I'm also seeing nursing classes. I'm also seeing like some type of a skills building class that will really enhance your your marketability on the work front. I'm seeing people returning back to a situation that they were trying at before. This can be a relationship. This can be something that failed in the past, okay? Like a relationship that failed in the past or a situation where you're redoing something that has failed in the past. And I'm also feeling like many of you are, are trying to figure out a strategy. It's like, why didn't it work before and what can I do to make it better? And on the relationship front, you're realizing it didn't work before because maybe the other person was starting to emotionally check out. And so if I go back into the situation, I have to give it my all. I have to, you know, go out on a limb and let them know how I feel and just give it my all. And I feel like this is kind of like one last try, you know, one more chance, but it's it's pretty much one last chance. And I, I, I'm sensing like the other person might not be 100% invested, okay? And if you're starting to see signs of that, I feel like it's better to release them because they're not giving you enough. And I'm also feeling as if if you're going back to a suit to something that didn't work out before, you're very excited and very anxious about restarting it. But I feel like whatever reason why it failed the, the, the previous time has not been fully flushed out or fully resolved. And so going back into it this time around, you have to do things very differently. And you are aware of that. You are aware of that, but I'm sensing that it's kind of hard for you guys right now with this situation to think outside the box and to figure out how can I do it differently. And I feel like for many of you, it's sort of like, you know, going from the water to the air. Okay. It has less to do with the emotions, but more to do with the mental capacity. So, for example, you have your heart set on being a historian, okay? Like you want to do, <clears throat> you want to study history, you want to study language arts, you want to study, um, I don't know, things that are a little bit more liberal arts oriented, but you're innately very, 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 very good with the... Um, the STEM subjects, you know, math, science, technology, and things like that. And so it has a lot more to do with the mental gifts and the mental capacity rather than what you truly, truly want. And so if this is something that you truly, truly want. You have to kind of redo or rewire or restructure the way that you work. Okay, so if you're thinking in terms of, you know, more logic, if your mind is a little bit more like an engineer, then you have to take that extra step 
in order to make your mind a little bit more liberal arts oriented. Does that make sense? That's the best like way that I could explain this. So it's about retraining your brain, looking at a situation differently. And I also feel as well, you know, there's a huge amount of um, practicality that needs to be thought of when we embark on this new venture. Um, I see a lot of good news coming into the picture <clears throat> for those of you that are students. I see as well, you know, like um, money coming in, like financial aid, um, scholarships for many of you, um, internships, like paid internships. And then I'm also sensing as well, they're saying like news coming from far away. I have here the page of wands and I have this bird carrying a letter. So very, very good news coming into the picture. And what I'm seeing as well is um, it seems though that if you have been trying to, you know, figure out how am I going to be able to pay for this? How, how, where's the money going to come from? How much do I have to pay? There's something coming in that will alleviate the situation because whenever we do things that are for self-improvement, self-investment, the universe will always help us find a way. So there's something coming in that is going to be able to help you be able to afford this. Some of you are getting bonuses. Some of you are getting scholarships. Some of you get are getting some type of a loan or even a grant. Okay. So I feel like things are going to be able to get off the ground. Okay. Don't worry too much. Um, what I feel though is this, um, this spread is very, very relationship oriented. And I feel like that's one of the things where one of the areas where I feel like you guys are struggling and, um, you know, you, you have a, a very small inner circle and a lot of it, uh, the, the people within that inner circle are usually family or people you consider family. If you have a really long history with somebody, you consider them family. But I feel like a small, a very small support network. And the people within that support network have usually flocked to you for advice, for counsel, for a shoulder to lean on for the stability that you provide. And so switching roles where you are the one that's vulnerable, where you have things that you want to unload, where you want to ask for their advice, it's a little bit hard too. Because if, if we, you know, get pigeonholed into a specific role and that's what others see us, it's really hard for the, the role reversal. And so I feel as if you, yes, you have people that you trust and people that you love, but in terms of you opening up, being vulnerable and telling people, you know, hey, I've got a lot of things on my plate. I need somebody to talk to. I need help or even I need somebody to talk to. You know, I need somebody to, to ask, ask um, get advice from. It's really hard for you to approach the people around you. And so they don't have to be the people in your inner circle. They can be people outside of it because as long as they can give you good advice, it's important to take their advice. Okay. Um, there's the person that you're dealing with. I'm seeing, and this is more like, you know, on the romantic front. I, I keep seeing like somebody comes to you when they're broken hearted, you pick them up, you put together the pieces and then they, they can, they, they never express their appreciation or they never express, you know, how they feel, but I feel like they come to you when they're broken and they leave you when they're whole. So you're playing a little bit of a, um, you're, you're, you're playing a little bit of a fixer. You're fixing this person's problems. And then as soon as they're healed up, as soon as they're done, they're out of the picture. Don't let yourself be used. Okay. And don't let yourself, um, settle for second best because I feel like this person, they're very, very confused. They're very relationship oriented. Um, I'm actually getting a very strong Piscean energy. Somebody who, who's like very relationship oriented 
uh, they lose themselves in relationships. And then when their relationship partner is no longer in the picture, they have trouble finding themselves. So they're kind of wobbly. And then emotionally, they're very up and down when they're alone. They come to you and then you fix them. And then they go back to, you know, that bad relationship or they go, go off somewhere else to their next relationship to their next destination. So there's that element in here. And um, I just don't feel like it's entirely healthy. And I feel that, you know, don't enable this energy, okay? Um, you're not meant to be fixing other people. I feel like you have things in your life that you need to focus on and you need to kind of fix on your on your own or with other people's help. So you're, you're not at a point right now, especially for this week, where you can fix other people. Um, there are a lot of long-term goals that you need to get moving on. Long-term goals means things that we have to do. It might start out in a very, very slow progression, but over time it is going to enhance, greatly enhance your income generating potential or your marketability, or your potential overall in everything that you do. And some of you, you are aware of what you need to do, but I don't see you taking the practical steps to get there. And I feel like as we round out this year, come January, there's going to be this fire lit up from under you, where you're going to feel like, I have to do it. No more delays, no more, you know, uh, saving it for another day, no more procrastination, I have to do it. And this has been kind of scratching at the back of your mind since October. And we, we really can't, you know, delay this anymore. We, we need to get moving because this is long-term growth. It has long-term growth potential and you need to just, you know, go out on a limb and do that, okay? So the energy I'm getting incessantly is just, you know, going out on a limb, doing something, getting things started. Um, I feel for many of you, schooling. I feel for many of you taking like some type of a course to get a certificate, to be certified in something. And I feel like there's money associated with it, meaning, you know, there there's a big financial payout that you have to anticipate and you are aware of it. And I feel like there's a lot of hesitation, too, because it's like I'm putting in a lot of money and it takes such a long time for it to pay out. Is it worth it? It is worth it. It's going to be worth it. But you have to kind of jump into it 100%. You have to do it 100%. You can't like, you know, half-heartedly do it and expect to have a good outcome. So train your mind. You're all in or you're all out. You can't live, you know, half out of the water, half in the water, straddling both worlds and doing anything successfully. Okay. Um, you are a land creature. So get out of that water. And just, you know, start living your life, start moving forward and get yourself grounded. Okay, so I hope the reading is not too preachy. I just feel like there are a lot of inner conflicts overall. It's not other people bringing you problems. It's more like you're conflicted with the direction that you want to take and you're conflicted with what you want to do. Your heart says one thing, your mind says another Getting yourself back to your element is going to really help with, you know, the decision making process. And I also feel like, you know, don't wait too long. You're going to miss out on an opportunity. OK, um, Capricorns, I hope the reading is helpful for you. I do wish you all the best. OK, 